Hi everyone and welcome to your midweek astrology update brought to you by 1millionnights.com. Now this might be potentially our last midweek astrology update. So I would like to take this chance to thank each and every one of you for listening to my horoscopes, for listening to all of my other guidance, for the support, for the wonderful comments. And most of all, for always encouraging me to keep on doing my work. So I would really like to use this opportunity to thank everyone and of course to thank One Million Nights for being part of my life and for giving me this wonderful once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to express myself, to share my work and to be an inspirational force. And I think that out of everything, that is the most important part. So we have a very active sky playing out all throughout the week, but it is full of tension, it is full of stress, very heightened emotions. For some people, even a little bit of anxiety, sleeplessness, restlessness. Despite the fact that physically speaking, we might not really be all that full of energy and vitality due to Mars being in the earth sign of Taurus, a part of the sky where it cannot bring forward its higher qualities because it is the opposite sign of Scorpio, a sign which Mars rules. But the physical part of things might not really be that very important unless it's about resources, material values, money, currency, investments, even self-worth, because the emphasis is placed on this area of our lives, for Taurus represents all of these, and of course also the pleasures of life. And since both Mars, Uranus, and Dark Moon Lilith are in one place, so they hold a conjunction, and they speak in tension with the Sun, Jupiter and Saturn in the sign of Aquarius, this gives the sense of urgency, this is what causes the restlessness, the anxiety, because we feel that we truly need to achieve some kind of breakthrough, or at least to have a certain kind of stability in our lives. Most importantly, to have a fighting chance against all the chaos, instability, all the problems and, you know, basically the crisis brought on by the COVID situation, regardless from which perspective we look at it. Well, that is what we're trying to cope against. And one of the best coping methods is for us to be stable, secure, grounded, especially from a material point of view. Now, from a non-material perspective, it isn't as simple as that. Because, you know, Uranus is the new, it is the next, it is the revolutionary. It wants change very quickly in the now, and it is not waiting. Well, that Saturn in Aquarius represents the rules, regulations, restrictions, everything that are blocking us from experiencing life, from every single perspective, may that be materially, and this is where interhuman contact comes into focus, because Dark Moon Lilith in the sign of Taurus, well, she wants to experience life through all our senses, she wants the hugs, she wants the taste, she wants the smell, she wants to experience everything, and she is not going to wait, especially because Mars is also there, Uranus is also there and this is a very electric combination where we might not have any other chance but to listen to our instincts, to listen to our desires, to our needs. And when those needs are not really material, they might be our principles, our values, the way we perceive values, our value systems, in the sign of Taurus, of course. And that Saturn is... Our situation in the present moment, what is available and what isn't available for us personally, regarding our plans, our goals for the future, 
what we want to experience even in the close future. Now, when there is a massive contradiction between those two elements, what we desire and what we are allowed to experience, as in Saturn and Aquarius, now that is a kind of tension which is not going away anytime soon, because Saturn and Uranus are going to be holding this type of conversation all throughout 2021. In the middle of February, their conversation of tension gets exact for the first time. Then we have another meeting in the summer and then a final one in the winter in December 2021. But without Mars in this equation, this energy is going to be playing out totally differently because neither Uranus and Saturn, especially in the sign of Aquarius, isn't really personal it is more about the collective, the rulers, the leaders against the representatives or even the individual. But the individual in this case has to be part of a collective because alone it has absolutely no chance in an ideological battle because you need someone to share your philosophies, your vision, your view, your plans, your modus operandi, so to speak. So this part of the energy is going to be simply a collective one, not as much individual, but right now in the present, because Mars is there, it is very, very personal. So that's why this period is going to be felt through in the most intense, in the most urgent, critical way by the individual because of the presence of Mars, later on, as I said, this energy is still going to persist, but it is going to lose the Martian factor from it, so it's going to be experienced totally differently, as in it might not bother us that much in the sense of our immediate and most urgent needs, but it might just bother our you know, life view, our principles, our philosophies, but at that is totally different. And to make the present moment situation a little bit tougher, while well, Neptune already perfects its square with the North Node in Gemini, and as we know, the North Node is our karmic path forward. Whatever we have to accomplish, how we have to accomplish it, and Neptune is the planet of illusions, that is one of its symbolism. So right now we might not really have all the knowledge, all the information, all the truth and clarity, safe, sound, logical plans available due to the external situation, of course. Like, let me just give you a very small example. Um, in many places all throughout the world, if you ask authorities right now whether they are going to open the schools or not, they will just say that they don't know and they cannot even provide estimative answers because the situation is that unstable from every perspective, even legal one. So it is all these small things built up because yes, there is schools, but there is also banks there is also paperwork, there is also inconveniences with many people's jobs, livelihoods, etc. So all these things added up, all these uncertainty, insecurity, well, they do confuse us, they do cause a lot of fear, and they do cause a lot of illusion, because even those individuals who might not really have anything to fear well, they might still lose their sense of security, and that is an illusion. Now, another way this Uranus squaring Saturn is playing out on the world stage, well, it is all this contradictory information and even scientific data analysis, etc., about potential medicines, about drugs which might be a miracle cure, not to mention the vaccines and you know, every part of this COVID situation, well, it is a very controversial subject. There are so many different opinions, points of view, which contradicts each other. And the thing is, 
we cannot actually say which one is correct or incorrect because every theory makes perfect sense in its own way, but at the same time, none of them do. So it's really a matter of choice what we choose to work with, what we choose to believe, what we choose to adapt as our guiding principle. And, you know, one of the safest courses of action to take in the present moment is to just admit that none of us hold the ultimate truth and it's absolutely fine to be confused and not to know right from wrong in certain times in life because whenever our minds don't make sense of a situation, well, it's not really a problem because we have so many different types of intelligence that can help us. There is, for example, intuition, which doesn't really need any kind of external information for us to just feel what is right and wrong for us personally. There is the primordial intelligence of our instincts deeply rooted in our genes, our reptilian brains, basically. So our instincts, our gut feeling can also tell us what is good and what isn't for us personally, or at least warn us if there are any dangers. And yet another valuable source of guidance is the heart and the heart space. And this isn't just a spiritual principle. The heart even physically has a neural network, so electricity courses through it. It also has a certain kind of electromagnetic field, which is even stronger than the brains and all of this is due to scientific research this is measurable science and not so much spiritual philosophy and this is even a scientific version that there is some kind of intelligence within our hearts even physically so that means that whatever our feelings tell us whatever our hearts our deepest emotions, our passions tell us, well, that is an undeniable truth for us personally. Of course, we have to rationalize it. Of course, we have to filter it. Of course, we have to apply greater wisdom. But whenever we are totally confused and no other sources of rationality and logic can help us, well... Whatever is alive in our hearts, that might be our truth. And there is a very specific reason why I'm highlighting this. Well, just tomorrow, we have a very powerful, intense, shocking, surprising full moon in the sign of Leo. And Leo rules the heart. It rules the heart-based truth because it is basically the symbol of our creativity but we cannot create, we cannot express ourselves in a creative fashion if we do not know who we are. So we do have to know the truth inside our hearts, especially about us, our identity, our own beings. And tomorrow's full moon is going to be speaking in a T-square, so an aspect of maximum tension, both to Uranus and Mars and Dark Moon Lilith in the sign of Taurus. And the sun is also going to be conjunct Jupiter. Jupiter amplifying, expanding all of this. So we're in for some very intense moments tomorrow. But of course, this also has a really positive side. Because this is a really, really dynamic energy. Especially informationally. Whatever truth. But of course, this is more like personal truth. As in practical information, not controversial stuff, can just enter our lives in the most unexpected, surprising fashion. And even if whatever we become aware of might be uncomfortable, shocking, unsettling, well, it is still helpful. It is still meant to... It is still meant to place us in a position of greater clarity, a place from which we can make safe and sound decisions, or at least be able to delay some if that is what we feel we have to do. 
But at the same time, this Mars and Uranus conjunction also energizes us. So we are definitely going to be willing to serve our own greatest good, to support ourselves, to work for what we want to accomplish in our lives. So this is also the energy of passion, ambition, courage, motivation, determination. And even though there is a certain risk to this energy, because Leo also rules the risks that we take, But this is where if we dare to step out of our comfort zones, if we dare to believe in ourselves, in our worth, in our value, in our capacity, regardless of what expression, belief takes, it can still be an energy of great empowerment which causes the breakthrough. Because sometimes breakthrough is only a question of attitude. For example, the only job available to us in the present moment might be one that we shy away from because we might deem it too hard or our skills too low for that specific job but because we might not have any option we just go to that interview and nail it and this can be one of the expressions of Inner power actually saving the day without any external requirements. Or let's say another expression of this energy. You meet someone who you are really, really attracted to. It's almost like a magnet. But the only way to, let's say, make this connection more permanent, a permanent part of your life, is if you open yourself up, have the courage to go and talk to this person to express your feelings or opinions, etc. And this is the risk because it can go either way. But if you do overcome your shyness or your inner limitation, it can still turn out to be something really, really wonderful. And also, another very important element to this is, the Sun is conjunct Jupiter at this time. And whenever the sun meets with Jupiter in the sky, regardless where it takes place, it is still a very fortunate and lucky energy where our inner truth, our hopes, our wishes, our faith, everything that we believe in can all of a sudden conjure up very lucky moments in our lives. And yes, the sun and Jupiter do speak in tension with Mars and Uranus, And they do oppose the moon in Leo. But this doesn't have to be doom and gloom. This can just represent the power of motivation. Where your feelings due to the stress, urgency, maybe anxiety. Are so very, very spiked up. That they just turn you into a quantum electromagnet. Just attracting everything that you need urgently in your life one after another. But of course, if your heart is full of fear, doubts, insecurity, and mistrust in the self, then it's very obvious what this energy is going to attract into your life. So it is very, very important to stay as positive, as strong, or at least neutral, detached as you can in the present moment. Don't allow any external drama to confuse your feelings, but neither allow the inner drama to get out of hand. And chances are this is a obstacle, a challenge that all of us are going to be experiencing in our own individual and unique ways. Because this T-square is basically a crisis that we have to overcome through courage, through inner mastery, through the most positive expression of that Mars... Which also means not to turn into violence, frustration, depression, us turning against ourselves, us turning against our loved ones, etc. So rage and exploding with anger is something that we really have to block out as much as we can. And it won't be easy because chances are that most of us do have at least one urgent pressing matter in our lives which we must resolve without delay, without any compromises. Or if it's a compromise, because a full moon sometimes 
does represent a certain kind of soul level compromise that we accept. But regardless, we do have some kind of crisis in our lives that needs to be resolved very, very quickly. And this full moon just gives us the power, the strength, the courage, and of course the urgency to do just this. Now to make things even more multidimensional, there is another energy in the sky which is just as important, just as impactful as the full moon. And ironically, it also becomes exact on the day we have the full moon and Leo. We're talking about the Venus and Pluto conjunction. Now, Venus and Pluto do meet in the sky every year, but I do feel that this year it is going to be a little bit more important than it usually is. Well, first of all, because Venus and Pluto do meet at around 25 degrees of Capricorn, a degree which is very, very close to where last year, so 2020, 12th of January, Saturn-Pluto conjunction took place in the sky. So this might be, on one hand, a reflection of whatever happened to us. However, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction transformed our lives, our reality, our principles, our own personal rules and regulations, our relations with the self, and of course with other people, our relations to work, to job, to all of the symbolism of Capricorn life path, for example. And also another important factor is that after Venus meets with Pluto, well, very soon she is going to move over to meet with Saturn and Jupiter in the sky. So whatever this Pluto-Venus conjunction is going to trigger in our lives, it is definitely going to be part of our future, so it is going to be at least one brick in our foundations. Now, of course, this energy can be perceived in so very many different ways. I personally perceive it in three nuances, so to speak. One of them is definitely about everything that we love, because Venus is the queen of our emotions, the queen of the heart. And also, you know, she does rule value, money, finances, currency, etc. But the value is actually bestowed upon money or whatever that may be by the heart, by our feelings. It has to be valuable for us personally or at least collectively in order for that value to be able to exist materially, so to speak. So it is something or someone that we love and that love is going through a transformation. So one of its dimensions or way of expressions is ending and another one begins. So more practically, what can this mean? Well, it can be, for example, a relationship that was always part of your life, of your everyday normality is transforming it can mean that a lot of people under this energy are going to re-specialize themselves, as in materially, uh, job-wise. It can be an important wake-up call to use certain things which are definitely valuable. For example, a skill, a talent, a knowledge, know-how, expertise, or something that you're good at which, of course, you haven't used very often in your life, or maybe it belongs to the past. Well, all, all of a sudden, whatever that is, may it be a skill, talent, a know-how, expertise, even connections, it's going to resurrect and be, once again, an active part of your life. Like, for example, the ending might be that your job is well, it's basically ending regardless of the reasons, and you find yourself having to decide what to do next. Either you look for a similar job, but you also have the option to do something totally different and see how that works. It can be, you know, jumping from one passion onto another. 
Another nuance of this energy absolutely has to do with our emotional worlds, maybe people who we love. So certain relationships in our lives are transforming. Certain people who were part of our old normality are no longer part and we need to accept this truth that we do need to surrender and give up on certain kind of relationships. But at the same time, Pluto is a fated energy, so something totally new can just enter in our lives and be even better than what we had to give up on. But regardless of how this is going to be playing out, there is one element which is in common in every expression of this energy, and that is the need to have stability, reliability, groundedness, and a sense of commitment, regardless of if that is a job, a new career, new study, new people entering your lives, new alliances, new uh, business partners, for example, or a new kind of business, a new project, it has to provide stability or it has to show guarantees that it's going to last or be viable for the longer term future. And this is very important because Venus and Pluto is also control. It is also our own personal power. And why do we need this control and power? Well, in order to secure that we always have in our lives at least something that gives us joy, that gives us pleasure, that gives us passion and the ability to love something. Venus in the sign of Capricorn so, you know, this can contradict the uh, Leo full moon because that is all about risk and stepping out of our comfort zones, daring to go where we haven't gone before. And this Venus-Pluto conjunction is, yes, we desire the change, but that change also has to be safe, sound and secure, at least in the expression of Venus. So at least provide us with Something that gives joy, meaning, emotional value to our life. But as I said earlier, Pluto many times involves endings, terminations, metamorphoses in the sense that something has to end in order for something new to enter in our lives. But at the same time, Pluto can also be extremely magnetic and not in the Uranian kind of way, where it all depends on our minds, mindset, what we are consciously aware of. Pluto is an unconscious energy, so basically it is the symbol of fate. When something fated has to happen, well, Pluto will find a way to deliver it into our lives one way or another, sometimes in the most hidden and arcane fashion. It's there and we might not even know that it's there, but sometimes very, very directly. As in, like it or not, this is the change that entered your life and you have to work with it. So this can also mean powerful new beginnings for some people, especially those who had terminations, endings, powerful changes already, especially in areas of their lives which were under the rulership of Capricorn. So for many people, fate can actually deliver the replacement of what you lost, what you had to give up on, surrender, etc. And it might be what fate delivers that might surprise you, shock you, awake all your emotions to life. And, you know, this isn't really of any polarity, it can be good, bad, but that is only due to our perceptions. Because ultimately, I do believe whatever this energy conjures up, well, it serves our greatest good, regardless of how we try to split the hair. Even if it can be shocking in the more negative way, it still delivers either a powerful truth or a lesson or something that we radically need to change in our lives or mindset or, or maybe it is something totally unconscious that we, which we haven't been aware of at all. Now, collectively speaking, 
the full moon energy and the Jupiter, Sun, Saturn, squares with Uranus, Mars and Dark Moon Lilith are without a doubt going to stir up spirits. You know, the revolutions, protests, people opposing the rules is going to be a theme that is omnipresent all throughout January, February and even March. So that is nothing new. But this is where this energy can have a very good side because Aquarius also rules technology. It also rules digitalization, the internet, everything that has to secure our future advancement as a species. So the sun meeting Jupiter in the sky can be a time of great revelations, especially new inventions, great advancements in some kind of science, technology, maybe discoveries in cosmology regarding artificial intelligence. And, you know, Saturn is a planet which always represents the physical, so it can also be something really good regarding the coronavirus situation. And, of course, it can also be a legal, legislative kind of innovation, new idea, new approach of making things fairer, more equal, more equitable. All of these also belong to the sign of Aquarius. But the true benefit of whatever is going to reach daylight around the Jupiter-Sun conjunction, well, that is definitely going to be contested. It is going to be doubted, questioned, because it might be something way too extreme or it might challenge customs, traditions, rules, etc. So the battle between the classic ruler of Aquarius Saturn and the modern ruler Uranus. And out of these two planets, it is obvious that Uranus is the more powerful influence. So whatever will reach daylight at this time is definitely going to be part of our future, but it will still be contested, it will still be doubted, there will be attempts to stop it, block it, etc. So time will have to pass until it becomes an active part of our everyday lives. But individually, it can be really, really positive because the sun meeting Jupiter basically illuminates our soul's It illuminates that part of our lives where 9 degrees of Jupiter falls to. So it can give us a lot of hope, a lot of faith, a lot of optimism, inner power. The feeling that we are so very aligned with our inner truth. As in, regardless of what happens around us in the world, collectively speaking, we can still know who we are what our life stories are, what we have to accomplish, what we have to do in this life. And we won't allow anything to actually ruin our emotional, psychological and spiritual well-being. And this is a great inner motivation. This is a great inner strength that can actually see us through the toughest of times. Even if we are in a very, very tough and delicate situation, you know, with the Sun-Jupiter conjunction, we might not perceive it as, you know, a depressive moment, as doom and gloom, as loss, as the end at all. We might actually see it as an opportunity to change, to eliminate certain things in our life, to change our social circle, our friends, where we can easily abandon those people who simply don't resonate intellectually, mentally, principle and philosophy-wise with us, in the sense that we won't fight against fate separating us, but rather, instead of feeling all alone and abandoned, we can see this as a wonderful opportunity to make new friends, but the right type of people who actually see, perceive, and live life like we do. We cannot ignore that Aquarius is also about our circle of friends, the community that we belong to. 
So it's never a part of our lives where we are alone. And this is really, really important because there are so very many situations in life when everything is blocked for the simple reason that we exist in a social circle which has absolutely nothing to do with us, with our souls, with our personality, with our way of thinking, all of it. So, of course, everything is going to be blocked because the energy, not even the power of faith, it just can't freely flow in our lives because there are no open channels. It is basically like the story of the ugly duckling. What is a swan doing living a life of a duck? And once we get ejected, let's say, through fated events or through our own decisions from that limiting circle of friends, even if we replace 10, 20 people for one person, but the right person, that can unblock the flow. If you end up in a place where at least you can adapt, where at least you can survive in, where you no longer perceive social life as a prison, as you being an alien amongst strongly interconnected people who share the same life views or principles or whatever. Well, all doors can simply open up in an instant. When you share your life, your time, your thoughts, your feelings, your visions, whatever, with people who you have something in common with, that basically creates very strong quantum connections and the flow is going to be there in your life. Because, you know, many times we ask ourselves, what are we doing wrong? Why aren't we successful when we actually have the mindset, when we have, like, purity of our hearts, our intentions, we embody peace, collaboration, you know, the highest principles, and still, our lives are like an eternal winter where everything is always frozen. And a lot of time, the problem doesn't even lie with us, Because it's not our minds, not our unconscious patterns, fears, etc. Which block out everything. But rather the community, the circle of friends, the people who we are strongly connected with. Because every single person, every single soul is a channel, an open channel to fated forces or the creative power of thoughts, ideas, sharing them cooperating, collaborating, etc. So, you know, even if those people in our lives are not toxic, bad intended, they're absolutely wonderful human beings, but we have nothing in common with them, that is still being in the wrong place, in the wrong community, in the wrong circle. And especially when those people are not bad intended, there is absolutely nothing wrong with them. It's so very hard to see the big truth that we just don't resonate with them because we cannot simply point out anything. We can't blame them for being bad people. We can't say that they're selfish, that they're this and that. When there is only good things that we can say about them, well, then we are basically blind to the blockages. And the solution here isn't to just split the hair in four and analyze every single person. The solution is so very simple, just to listen to our hearts. Because most of these meaningless social connections are in our lives, for example, due to social media, for us not being able to say no to someone, or because when someone approaches us in a genuine, nice and honest way, Well, of course, we have the tendency to respect that person. But respect doesn't really mean to become part of their lives. So, as I said, the truth is always in the heart. If there is no resonating feelings in your heart, just respect and 
to honor that person because they're a human, a genuinely nice human being. Well, that is not really enough. That doesn't really make you a member of that circle, that community. It doesn't really connect you in a spiritual and karmic way with those people. It is just placing you into the position, symbolically of course, of the ugly duckling, where you think that you're a duck, everyone else thinks that you're a duck, and they accept you and you accept them and everything is okay on the surface but you're not really a duck and you really don't belong there. And because there's only niceness, well, fate is not going to separate you in a traumatic and forced way. But there are special moments when, for example, Venus meets Pluto, when this truth becomes that much more obvious to us where it is that we don't belong to. And this is one of the hardest energies because there is no negativity there to motivate us to do this and that. If there is all only decency there, then we have to make the very delicate and tough choice to distance ourselves. And once we do, we can all of a sudden just notice that life feels different, that certain blockages are simply no longer there, Certain things start working, they start showing results, offers come in, new people come in. You might start meeting like total strangers coincidentally who leave a very good impression on you. And when you're in this phase, well then you have everything to look forward to because that means that life got unblocked. And really good things are going to be happening to you because you have everything you need on the inside, but now also on the outside, at least the connections or the availability for new connections that you need to get where to where you want to be in life. But of course, the way I spoke about this is so easy. And in reality, it is never this easy because... There is a lot of Plutonian type of feelings that always get in the way whenever we want to make a very important move in our lives. For example, shame, guilt, attachments and an illusionary kind of love where we might feel so much respect for a certain person and we mistake that for love. But it's not even a mistake because it is love. But that doesn't mean that we personally have to consolidate that love. Love is just a feeling. If we feel it, if we feel that respect, and if we just shower that person with positive, respectful thoughts, that is already an expression of love. But that doesn't mean we have to be tied to them. That doesn't mean that we have to be part of their lives always. But to reach this conclusion emotionally in a way that we can actually act upon these feelings, well, it is obviously hard. It is obviously pretty time consuming because we will doubt our choices. We will doubt our sense of logic, even the truth within our hearts. But once we actually manage to embody the truth that we are also responsible of everyone who we have in our lives and everything that results from that, well, it is only after that moment when we can make truly healthy and self-empowering choices within our circle of friends, a collective, somewhere where we belong to. And And I do feel the need to exemplify this. Now, let's say that you're an introverted person which means that your circle of friends and acquaintances is not vast as an ocean. But of course, introvert doesn't mean that you're full of hurts, traumas, pains, insecurities. You can simply be a dreamer or a deeply spiritual person or simply an introvert who just simply likes to spend time with its own being, with the self. 
and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But you might find that in your circle of friends, all other introverts, let's say, because naturally it would be the same archetype who can understand you or bring any value to your life. But if those introverts who you are connected with are introverted in a totally different way, maybe because they were hurt, they're rebels, they're outcasts, they are fighting society, they want to oppose, well then, you're not really like them. So basically, you could be an ugly duckling because you represent the most positive, elevated, dreamy, magical, creative, artistic side of what introverted involves. And the rest of the people can represent the not-so-pleasant side. But since you're a part of this collective, even if it's just symbolic, well, still, your life will kind of play out in the same vibes as those other people, and it won't fit who you truly are. Then, in this case, you might be better off having connections with people who are not as introverted, but are just as positive, optimistic, dreamy, and basically happy as you are, but in a different way. Because you can be introverted, but be so happy with yourself, with your life, with your dreams, with how everything is. It can simply feel perfect for you. But if you choose to connect with people on the same frequency even if they are not your archetype, now that is something truly constructive. That is when new things can really enter your life. Rather than if you keep your old connections where everything is blocked and only troubles, pains, obstacles, challenges, misunderstandings seem to be part of your everyday normality. So long story short, with this Jupiter Sun meeting in Aquarius, our friends are valuable and valid reflections of who it is that we also are. But if we keep surrounding ourselves with the wrong people, the mirror won't be there anymore because we will think that we are like them and in truth we are not at all. And this is even more relevant Because the sun is also conjunct Saturn, which means a powerful reality check. Especially, you know, with everything that has to do with Aquarius. So yes, it is our hopes, dreams, future plans, goals, long-term future, yes. But there is also our circle of friends, people who we are connected with, and where we belong to, the community that we belong to. So chances are, some of us might be really disappointed with certain people and absolutely delighted with other people because this is one of those karmic moments of the year when people take, ironically, take off the masks and show who they truly are without them even expressively knowing that this is what they're doing. Their gestures their responses is the mirror showing us who it is that they are. So after this week ends, especially with the Leo full moon tomorrow, we're definitely gonna know where it is that we stand, socially speaking. Who supports us, who believes in us, who we can truly collaborate with. And by this I don't mean professionally. I mean, the simple act of friendship is already a collaboration in one sense or another. And who it is that we just simply cannot rely on, and as I said, not due to a fault or anything negative, but because they don't resonate with us and who we are, how we are, with our purposes, goals, etc., And there is nothing wrong with that, but the distancing still has to take place in order for us to free this connection. And this is also one of the major themes of this Leo full moon, 
where it is exactly these type of truths and informations which are going to awaken our emotions of our hearts. But I really, really hope that most of us do get the most pleasant, delightful, surprising side of this energy. Maybe an unexpected love declaration or someone showing gratitude or someone just surprising you with beautiful words and not the unpleasant kind. I'm pretty sure that whatever happens on the world stage with all this crisis situation is going to be a valid source for the unpleasant kind of surprises. So let's hope that personally, we do tap into the most wonderful, beautiful, Jupiterian type of this energy. Well, this concludes your midweek astrology update. I really hope that you enjoyed it and you found it useful. I would really like to say until next time, but chances are that unfortunately there might not be a next time. So I would just like to say, may the stars guide and bless each and every one of you.